So welcome to the CMC Markets webinar with myself, market analyst David Madden. Uh, today's date is Monday, the 7th of August, and the time has just gone uh, 15, quarter past 12, 12.15. Uh, and as with every one of our webinars, we always have to leave the, uh, the, risk, warning, uh, the risk warnings up on the screen uh, for compliance purposes before we actually proceed with the actual webinar itself. So I'll just leave that right there and you can have a look at this. Have a read of it yourself. Uh, it's very self-explanatory and quite straightforward. And that right there is going to be the last slide. And there we go. Thank you for your patience. And we can actually now proceed with the webinar actually itself. Uh, so basically, what we've seen uh, over the over the uh, of the morning session, it's been a relatively quiet session. Uh, we had a positive positive move overnight over in Asia, and uh, it's been a bit a bit of a mixed bag here in Europe. The FTSE is doing a bit better than its continental counterparts. Uh, it's holding up better. Than, it's holding up better. Uh, than the German market certainly because of the, the upward move we've seen in the mining companies. Um, proportionally speaking, the FTSE has got a much higher percentage of natural resource and mining companies in comparison with other European equity markets, such as the, such as the DAX uh, and the CAC and, and the IFX and the, uh, and the, and the FTSE and MAVE over in Italy. So the strength in the iron ore market in China overnight, which is brought about by low in inventories of steel and also coincidentally high demand for steel, Push up the price of iron ore in China overnight, and therefore we've seen mining companies like Rio Tinto, BHG Billiton, Glencore, uh, and, and on top of that, Anglo American do quite well. So we've seen the FTSE have a bit, a bit, of, a bit of a better position this morning in comparison to what was going on uh, over in continental Europe. Adding to that, uh, it's by and large that the gains that equity markets uh, in Europe have made uh, made on Friday afternoon. On the back of the strong U.S. jobless, jobless sorry, the strong non non farm payrolls figures from the United States, and also the weakness of both the pound and the euro because we had such a, a, a positive upward move in the U.S. dollar. So the good news is most of the gains that were made back in particularly the last few hours of Friday's trading has managed to be hang on has managed to be hang on to uh, in in Europe today, even though sub markets like Germany have managed to kind of hand a small bit of the losses, so it's a small bit of the gains back. But nonetheless, uh, it's, it's, it's still looking relatively well. Uh, what to look out for uh, in terms of big uh, events to keep an eye on this week? Uh, as always, uh, I'll, I'll show you on a website where we can get the, uh, the news analysis section. So if you go to our homepage under news and analysis, this is where all our articles are posted uh, from, from, around, from, around, from around the world. Under news analysis, then click on the topic, Look to the weekly outlook, bring us up here, and we can have a glance now at what are the, what are the key uh, uh, major events, both corporate events and also economic events to keep an eye on throughout the actual week. So tomorrow, we have an update from first half figures from intercontinental hotels. Uh, we second, uh, also tomorrow, we have the second quarter numbers from Disney. Tomorrow and Wednesday, we have data coming out of China. Uh, we, have, we have both trade figures and also CPI numbers coming out of China on Tuesday and Wednesday, respectively. Uh, on Thursday, we have an update from Sydney World. Uh, on Friday, uh, sorry, sorry, jumping the gun there, on Thursday, we also have the second quarter update from, from, um, from Snap. Uh, bearing in mind that and that actual article is actually going to be on the website itself. So in the area where we just came from, to find this particular article on the news analysis section, uh, my colleague Michael Houston did an, an update on Snap, and that can be found on that page. Uh, and then on Friday, we have CPI numbers, and we're obviously going to be looking out uh, for the, the big ones to, be, to keep an eye on are going to be the ones from the United States of America. We do have a raft of companies reporting uh, largely in the U.S., uh, over the next few days, but to be perfectly honest, there isn't a whole lot of kind of major ones in terms of I know what's our popular with our clients. So I've already mentioned that we have an update from inter from the second half figures from Intercontinental Hotels on Tuesday. We also have an update on Tuesday from TripAdvisor, uh, TP, ICAP. We also have an update from Standard Life. Uh, we have an update from Wayfair 
Uh, on Wednesday, we have an update from Legal and General. Uh, on Thursday, we have an update from Sydney World, News Corp and Prudential. Uh, they, Prudential have their their uh, second half figures out. It's quite a long list, but to be perfectly honest, in terms of what's, mo what's most popular uh, with our client base, there isn't a whole lot of, kind of major ones in there, to be perfectly honest. Looking at the actual corporate, the ec economic calendar in a bit more detail, uh, we have our own economic calendar on our website, and it can be found going clicking under Market Pulse, fourth option down, Market Calendar. I'll just very quickly go through the major uh, economic events of the week of the next uh, four trading sessions. So turning our attention to tomorrow, as I mentioned, we uh, trade figures from China on ch tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, we also have CPI numbers, as I mentioned a moment ago, on Wednesday in China. Housing starts out of, out of Canada on Wednesday. And as we do every single Wednesday, the Energy Information Agency, the oil inventory numbers uh, coming out at half 3 p.m. On Thursday, we have uh, money we, we have um, money and lending numbers coming out of China overnight. Uh, in the morning time, we have UK time. We have um, manufacturing production, uh, industrial production out of the UK. And we also have, as we do every Thursday, initial jobless claims out of the United States. Bear in mind, the set of numbers that we saw from, from America last Friday in terms of both the non-farm payrolls came in better than expected and the previous month's numbers were revised higher. Unemployment ticked lower. Month, month Wages on a average earnings on a monthly basis increased. Average earnings on a yearly basis remained steady. Overall, it's a very good report. So keep an eye out for Thursday, Thursday's initial jobless claims from the United States. Uh, on Friday morning, we have German CPI. We also have Spanish CPI, Italian CPI, and then we also probably, probably the most important one of the lot to watch out for, American CPI out at half one. So the usual structure now the, of, our, of our webinar, how about we've talked about the events that, that happened over the weekend, the, the big events to watch out for during the week. We'll now run through the kind of major markets and uh, talk about the levels you should be keeping an eye on, eye, eye out on. So after taking a look at the FTSE 100, uh, interestingly enough, uh, the UK 100 was quite range bound for a while there. It was sort of in around the kind of 3,000, 7,300 mark up to around uh, 7,450 odd for quite some time. Now we seem to kind of pushed beyond that. So we've, so we've now traded north of this, uh, of the resistance here at 7,000, which comes into play. At 7,518, so that is now acting as support. All resistance to get new support, and it's also it's also been being complemented by an increase in positive momentum on, on top of that. So you can see after several weeks of kind of it trading within within about 150 to a point range, we finally kind of broken out of that. So we're now at the highest level I've not seen since mid June uh, on the FTSE 100. Momentum is looking positive, so so the momentum is clearly with the bulls. Should we should we hold above this level here uh, at 7,515.18? Uh, what we what, what we can expect is to keep an eye out to the upside for the resistance at 7,561. And then should we go beyond that, we will be looking towards the all-time high, which is just shy of the 6,000 mark. Any moves lower we see in, in the FTSE 100 could get support from this price here of 7,485. And then we'll be looking towards 7,460 and then back towards the 50 moving average at 7,445. Looking now at the, uh, the Germany 30, the DAX, we can see that the DAX, and to be fair, it's a quite common theme that the Eurozone equity markets aren't, aren't as in a stronger shape as the FTSE 100. And we can see what I mean here that obviously the big picture has been very much to the upside. So the big picture trend is very much up, uh, upward looking, uh, but we have seen we have seen a pullback here. We have seen uh, a, cr a creation of a lower low and also a lower high, and we 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 look that that, we're, that look like we're kind of moving back up higher again. But is that going to be a case of shaking off the, the downward trend that has been in since the middle of May, or is this just going to be another leg lower? So keep an eye on that the momentum. As we were moving lower all along here, the momentum was in the red, was, was negative. Now we've kind of swung back around a positive territory in the momentum. So we could see, at least in the next few days, the next week or so, we could see a move back higher. Where that move back higher, 
is going to be a continuation of the downward trend that we've been in as you can see a, a, a lower high and lower lows along here or whether it's actually going to it's, it's going to actually just be this was the correction and a resumption of the wider big wider uh, positive trend but levels we should be watching out for looking to the upside we've looking straight immediately towards the 100 day moving average at 12446 and then we're looking towards the 12500 mark and then beyond that the resistance here at 12576 this is where we could potentially be looking towards in the next in the next number of days or next week or so um, and if you do get to that level it could be an opportunity to we have seen selling of the rallies in the last number of couple, the last couple of months so we could see some selling pressure come in should we push on higher from these levels if we, if the market does turn over on itself and it does resume the kind of short to kind of medium term downward trend that it's been in we're looking towards the the support at 12095 and then below that, we've been looking towards the April low of 11,941. Uh, turning our attention now to what's been going on in America. And quite frankly, uh, the, the Dow Jones has just been absolutely booming it uh, the last the last, uh, the last, well, last number of months, but even like the last 10 days in particular. Uh, it would appear that the, the Dow Jones is very much on a, on a very clear and bullish winning streak. Um, as you can see here, positive momentum is still very much strong. It appears to be plateauing a bit, so it could be a sign that there's no uh, there's, there's no kind of increase in momentum at a rate at which the Dow is increasing. But nonetheless, the Dow is is a, is an exceptionally strong market, and it could it could prove to be very costly if you try and call the top. But if you do see any pullbacks, it could provide an opportunity to kind of buy into the market and uh, seeing as there's so much uh, upward momentum in the Dow Jones in the US 30. If we do see any moves lower, as you give, give back a small bit of ground in the US 30 in the Dow Jones, we could see some support not too far away from it now at the moment at 22,100 and then below that again at 20, 22,000, the number itself. But obviously, we've been creating a succession of higher highs and higher lows. It's in a very clear upward trend. The big picture for the Dow is to the upside. So bulls will be looking towards 22,200, 20,300, 400, and so on and so forth. The, S the Dow has been the kind of standout performer of, of say, global indices in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we have seen quite a decent run on the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100. Sorry, the Nasdaq 100, which, which is coming out now in a second. But it just, it, it just, it's been impressive, but just not as impressive as you've seen in the actual DAO itself. That was the wrong chart. I do apologize. What we can see here is straight away, the trend is clearly to the upside. Higher highs, higher lows, moving along nicely. What's a bit concerning is that what we're seeing here is the market is kind of registering higher highs and you know, record new record all-time highs in late July, early August. But it's a bit concerning though that we just haven't really kind of managed to kind of really kind of push beyond it. We've kind of plateaued a small bit. We haven't really given much ground back. But we can be kind of plateaued, and it's slightly kind of reflected here in the momentum. As you can see in other in other spells, the market's been pushing higher. Positive momentum is on the increase. We saw cooling off in positive momentum, whereby we saw the price come back to create a higher low before the next move higher again. So we could be looking at a scenario of, 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 a, of a bit of a, a respectable retracement um, in the S&P 500 in before, we, before we potentially have another move higher. So waiting for a kind of pullback and, and buying the dips has been the kind of popular strategy on the US indices over the last number of months. And should we see a pullback in the S&P 500, we could be looking towards re regions of 2,460, 2,450, and 2,440 itself. And then, of course, to the upside, we'd be looking towards 2,490 and 2,500 itself. It depends how much kind of risk you want to take on, because we may not even see a pullback to these levels. But at the same time, if you enter a trade too soon, if you, if you, if you were to buy the market now, we could go offside for a couple of days or a week or so before the overall market continues, potentially continues its wider upward trend. So it depends how, how much kind of risk you want to take on. If you wait for a market to pull back and it doesn't, you, you've missed the upward move. But at the same time, 
if you wait for if you wait for a pullback, seeing as the indicators are pointing, we could see a bit of a pullback. Obviously, you, you want to be you, you want to be getting it into a, getting into a trade at the at the best price possible. Uh, so that that's that's what, what's been going on in the S and P 500. Taking a look now at what's going going on in the Nasdaq 100. Not too dissimilar. I keep doing that. I keep clicking on the wrong chart, and the Nasdaq 100 here. As we can see, the Nasdaq 100 not too dissimilar to what we've seen in the down in, in the S&P 500. The market's going on to to, to hit record highs in in late July, but since then we sort of hung around in a bit of consolidation. And while that has been going on, notice this very powerful upward move here we saw from early July to late July was mimicked by a swing from negative momentum on the pullback, all pushing pushing higher, creating a new all-time high. But at the same time, you're creating a new all-time high on declining momentum. And now we're in negative momentum. So it could be an indication that we could see a bit of a pullback or a bit of a drift lower in the NASDAQ 100 before we actually potentially going to potentially continue on with the kind of wider upward trend that's been in place for some time now. So levels to watch out for on the NASDAQ 100, we, we could see a pullback too. This would be the first price to watch out for, 5,848. And then below that at the at the 50 day moving average at 5,800 itself. And then of course bulls will be looking towards the upside target of 6,000 and beyond. Having a look now what's going on in the commodities market. Gold, I can tell you right now, lost about $15 uh, between the back end of last week. Uh, and, well, from the Wednesday and Thursday until, uh, until now really. Given that gold has had kind of quite a, a decent run throughout the, over the last, well, to be quite frank, past uh, month, pulled off the lows here um, at 12:05. Effectively, went, went straight up uh, in a classic upward trend, whereby the market would push higher, create a create a, create a high, pull back, but new high, new higher high, higher low. But now we're at a bit of a turning point here. This this dow this sharp downward move here came. After a few days, after a few after a few days of indecision, and it came on time, and the, and the, the sell-off was triggered by the strong non-farm payroll figures we saw in the United States. The, the, the traders are still very much divided of, over whether we're going to see a rate rise from the Federal Reserve in December or not. Uh, the last time I checked, it was still only like 42% of, of a probability, so, so quite low. But it was nonetheless, it was enough to actually spook gold traders and encourage those who've been long for the last month to take some cash out of the market. We'd be consolidating it around 12.55, 12.60 throughout the day's trading session. It's been quite a boring afternoon, Friday afternoon and Monday morning with gold. Should we resume the upward trend, we'd be looking towards 12.70 and then, be, and then beyond that towards 12.80. And then, of course, we'd be looking towards a June high of 12.96. But if you do see the price of gold look to kind of uh, turn lower, we'd then be looking towards back towards 12.50, 12 and then 12... Um, this price here, I'm going to, I've been kind of looking to keep an eye out for, back towards 12.50 and then back in the low here at 12.35. And then we're looking back towards 12.15 and then 12.05 on gold. Keep turning our attention now, sticking with the commodities theme, over to the oil market. Uh, and in relation to oil has had, bearing in mind, we, we do have, today is the first day of the OPEC meeting which is taking place in Abu Dhabi. Uh, in relation to, to the, the, the reason behind the OPEC meeting is because the extension to the production freeze that was announced in late May didn't really do a whole lot of good for the, uh, for the price of the actual, for the price of the, uh, the price of oil. We didn't have really a whole lot of compliance with the production freeze. Uh, and in some cases, it, we saw exports from, from some OPEC members actually increase uh, since that and uh, since that product, alleged production freeze was was announced in late May, uh, yes, I will, I will I will chat about the dollar index uh, after I well I'll, I'll be coming on to currency pairs next. Uh, so I'll talk I'll talk about the dollar index in a few minutes. Um, I was just talking about uh, about the OPEC meeting. The OPEC meeting uh, today is day one of the day of the two-day OPEC meeting, and essentially it's about getting OPEC members to come together and actually chat about actually getting all of themselves to actually comply with the with the production freeze. 
the market, the OPEC did a good job in, in spending many months talking about extending the production freeze, which they eventually did. But as soon as that happened, the price of oil sold off because it was already priced in. And that, uh, and that was this move that we saw here in late May. So as you can see, it's not exactly ideal if OPEC talk, talk about extending the, actually announce a production, a, an extension to the production freeze. And what do we do? Create a massive sell-off and actually the lowest level we've seen uh, since kind of 2016 in the price of oil. The market has bounced back. We have seen, we have heard updates from people like Saudi Arabia who pledged to, to trim uh, oil exports. We've heard from Nigeria who are now uh, voluntarily complying with the OPEC-wide uh, production freeze. There's even talk of trying to get Libya to, to agree to it. And this is just really about kind of OPEC getting all its members in line and aiming to actually be serious and actually uh, comply and adhere to the actual production freeze and try and push the price of oil higher. It's obviously an interest. The problem with OPEC is that some, some in recent weeks we've seen OPEC members care more about their own selves rather than the overall organization. But taking a look at the price, it's been in a, in a very clear kind of upward trend uh, for the past about six weeks. We're still managing to hold above the 200 day moving average for this is, this is Brent all we're looking at here. So any kind of move, any kind of pullbacks could find support at the 200 day moving average of $51.70. To the upside, we'd be looking towards $53. And then beyond that, we'd be looking towards the this, this, the, uh, the May high of $54.57. And beyond that, Shares of liquor towards the April high at $56.53. It's going to be a very similar chart now for WTI, so I'll just bring that up now in a second. Very similar indeed. We're pretty much trading almost not too far away from right on the 30 moving average. The current price of oil is at WTI is $88.94. Uh, and, and it, which is pretty much right on the two-day moving average. So should we manage to hang up, hang above the two-day moving average uh, on that, we'll obviously be looking towards fifty dollars to the upside, and then beyond that, we'll then be looking towards the May high, which comes into place at fifty-one dollars and sixty-six cents, and then the April high, which comes into play at fifty-three dollars and fifty-six cents. Any kind of moves lower. Uh, we'll be looking to get support in around the kind of forty-eight dollars and twenty-three cents, and then the one-day moving average at forty-seven dollars and seventy-eight cents, and then back towards forty-seven dollars and eighteen. Notice how we are seeing a bit of a cooling off in the positive momentum. It's still in positive territory. We're still pretty much trading on the two-day moving average. So I think the the in the, the near-term outlook could be still still on the bullish side of things. Uh, but obviously traders are going to be quite uh, uh, wary of what's going on with OPEC. I'll run through uh, some of the major major currency pairs. First of all, uh, they're all going to have most of them are going to have the dollar some way some way uh, involved in it, and then I'll talk about the, the dollar index itself. So the euro, after an exceptionally impressive run, uh, it's, it's had as high as that, you know. Uh, Constantly creating fresh two-year highs has managed to give some of some of its ground back. Taking a look at the kind of wider chart here, we can see that it traded north of the 200-week moving average, but it didn't actually manage to close above it. So that that in a sign in itself is a sign that after a very impressive run, traders are bullish. But by the looks of it, they're not that bullish if, it didn't, if the market didn't actually close above the 200-week moving average. The 200-week moving average. It's going to be a big level to watch out for for the euro dollar. If we do see a close above that price, that's when we'd actually be looking. That that's what that would actually give uh, quite a bullish and, and positive move uh, sentiment to the euro versus the US dollar if we do close above it. But seeing as we haven't closed above it, it's a lot of an indication that the market's strong but not that strong. And if, you know, dare I say, we have seen a bit of profit taking. Um, well. After running into it, and then of course the the, the better than expected, and o overall very impressive, or fairly impressive, um, jobless claims report from the United States on Friday. We did see a bit of a push lower here. Levels to watch out for to the upside would be 118.30. So you get back above that, we, we could then put us back on the path towards 119. But if you fail to get back above 113, we could be heading back towards the kind of this this price here of 117.28. 
then back towards 117 and then back towards 116.16 itself for the euro versus the US dollar. Turning attention now to cable. It's like quite a good run versus the US dollar like the euro has. Uh, but looking at, at cable here, as you can see, Bank of England update just gone on Thursday, followed by um, followed by a, uh, the, the sell-off that we witnessed on Friday because of the non-farm payrolls. We see the we saw the traders were very quick to kind of cash in their profits because it's had a quite an impressive run, the pound versus the US dollar. The traders were very quick to cash in their chips. Uh, we've seen actually momentum actually swing negative, so we could actually be looking to have a, uh, a, 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 a we could be looking for, for a bit of a downward move in the pound to, to stay in place for a, a number of days yet. So looking towards the downside on, on the pound, the next big, kind of big number to watch out for is going to be 130 itself. Uh, and then it should be moved south of 130. We'll be looking towards the 50 day moving average at 129.25. And then under that, we'll be looking towards the 100 day moving average at 128.30. But to be fair, this is this is what we've seen in the last few days a, a sell off. The, the picture, the big picture of, of the last number of months has been very much to the upside for the pound versus the US dollar. So the wider the wider outlook, even if we do have a retracement of, of a another 100 pips or so, uh, another 150 odd pips from here, the outlook still would be to would still the upper trend would still remain intact. And levels to watch out for to the upside would be 131.59, and then of course the August high, which is created on Thursday, just gone at 131.67. Uh, turning our attention now to the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. It's been in a very clear and concise upper trend um, since April. It's been kind of constantly kind of pushing higher. The euro is, is, is very much on the move. Uh, buying on the dips has been a kind of the very kind of popular strategy that we've seen so far. We're currently trading at, at, uh, at 90.39. Should we see a pullback towards 90, 90 pence? Uh, that would be that this, this would be a potential area for support and then below that we'd be looking towards 89.23 and then under that we'd be looking towards 80 80 apologize 88 80 below that uh, but the the up the, the trend has been very much to the upside in the euro versus the british pound so we, we will be looking towards 91 and 92 to the upside Uh, take a look now at the dollar versus the Japanese yen, the dollar yen trade. It's, the dollar yen, as as we can see here, has been very the last number of last month or so has been very much in a very clear downward trend. But seeing as momentum is starting, negative momentum is starting to dissipate, it could be a sign that we could be looking for actually a bit of a push higher in the dollar versus the yen and. The dollar potential dot a potential move higher in the dollar versus the yen. You need to keep an eye on what's called intermarket analysis. So even if you are trading the dollar yen, you got to keep an eye on what the euro is doing versus the versus the U.S. dollar. You got to keep an eye on what the pound is doing versus the U.S. dollar. And the common theme above the, uh, in the two, the both the euro and and the, the euro dollar and the pound dollar have both been in decline. So it could be an indication that we could be seeing a bit of like a resurgence in the uh, in the U.S. dollar, given that it, everyone has been everyone has been exceptionally bearish on the on the greenback recently, and seeing as that we've had better than expected job uh, non-farm payroll numbers just gone, we also have inflation data out from the U.S. Uh, at the very end of this week. So the trend recently has been very much to the downside, but we are seeing a decline in negative momentum. So we could we could see a push higher in the power. In the US dollar versus Japanese yen, we could see a move higher towards well, the 100 day moving average and the 50 day moving average are you know, very much on top of each other in around the 111.40 to kind of 54 region. And should we move beyond that, traders will then be looking towards the 200 day moving average at 112.35. And then north of that again, we'd be looking towards 113. Uh, but if you do dip lower in the dollar yen, support could be found at 1, 110.62. 110.30 and then 109.84. In relation to uh, the, the US dollar index itself, 57, 58% of the US dollar index is the is the euro dollar. Is the the euro accounts for over half the dollar index. So 
If you want to know what's going on in the dollar index, you got to keep an eye on what's going on in the euro dollar. And as I mentioned, the euro dollar traded north of its 200 week moving average in around the kind of 118 region. It traded highs of 119, but it didn't actually manage to hold on to it. And we have retreated quite a bit since then. So if it's a sign, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, that the, the euro dollar bulls weren't bullish enough to, to get it to actually close north of the 200 week moving average, it could be an indication that it's got, that, that is going to act as a resistance. And it could even be a case of we could see a bit of a wider uh, retracement in the euro versus the US dollar. And should that be the case, seeing as euro dollar makes up over half, approximately 58% of the dollar index component, that could be a sign that we could be looking for a push higher in the dollar index itself. So looking at, the, at this chart here, it's an hourly chart. We can see here that it moves higher. It's so the, the dollar index pushed above the 200 hour moving average, which now has come back to act, act on as support. And the two hour moving average comes to play at 93.21 for the dollar index, where it's now acting as support. And should we, should we continue to hang on to that support level? Friday's, uh, Friday's high at 93.64 is going to be the immediate upside target. Then we'll be looking toward this price here, which comes into play at night, just, just north of 94 itself, 94.11. And then beyond that, we'll be looking towards 94.27 uh, for the US dollar basket or, or the US dollar index. Any dripping lower, uh, should we even move south of the 100 hour moving average at 93.21, we then could see a drift back towards the 93.02 region at this price here. Now, I'm aware that it's just, uh, we've, uh, just, I've been speaking to you for just over half an hour. Uh, are there any other markets that you'd like me to cover? Uh, before I wrap this up. Feel free to talk to uh, mention any, any markets. The Germany 30, I mentioned, uh, I, I mentioned that the, the Germany 30 at the, uh, at the beginning of the webinar, but I'll, I'll happily go over, go over it again. Um, Go to it now. The Germany 30, I was saying, was in a, uh, it's, it's in a it's been a downward trend since the middle of June. So the big picture of the Germany 30 has been very much to the upside. Um, it's a very kind of it's a very very much a very powerful rally that we've seen here from say November onwards. It's been very much power, push, pushing higher. But as we have seen, we've seen a decent enough correction in the in the Germany 30 in the uh, in in the DAX, since since creating an all-time high in June, it's gone on to create a lower low, a lower high, and another lower low. So we're wondering: is this just, just a correction in the kind of big overall big trend, or could this be the beginning of a few more kind of lower lows and lower highs, and actually doing and actually looking at an actual some, something of a reversal or a quite a deep retracement? So for the time being, we can see that it's been supported by 12,095 because we're currently trading around 12,230. We're kind of knocking on this resistance here at 12,343. Should we move north of that, we'll then be looking towards the water day moving average because it, it previously acted as support here. So it's now going to become resistance at, and, and it's, it's the next upside target to watch out for. Should we move north of 12,343? Will then be 12,446. We we'll then be looking towards the 12,500 region, and then north of that, we'll be looking towards this resistance here in the middle of July at 12,678. Moves higher in the DAX could potentially bring about uh, a new wave of selling, seeing as we've created a lower low here, a lower high here, a lower low here. So a move higher in the DAX. If we if if we take out 12,678, that could just be a sign that this, this was only a short-term correction and we're going to head back towards the recent highs. If we fail to make, make, a, make a considerable, fail to take out that level, that's when we could be looking at a potential uh, for a new uh, a new leg lower for the Germany 30. Uh, levels of, of looking to the downside would be the kind of late June, early, early, late, late July, early August lows of 12,095 
and then below that at 11,941. So now that we've covered the Germany 30, are there any other markets that you would like me to cover? No, you are very, very welcome. Just as a quick reminder, the news analysis that we that we update from myself here uh, and Michael Houston in London and also Colin in Canada and other analysts around the world, don't forget that I've read of those. It's under the news and analysis section. Looking at the topic here, clicking on topic, you can change that to weekly outlook and get the run rundown for the, for the week ahead. Obviously, you know, if you've managed to find this webinar itself, this is where we can keep an eye on for future webinars. Obviously, we do the Monday charity one is done every single every single Monday at 12.15. Uh, obviously, we, we have another webinar here. Next Generation Forex is coming on stream uh, on Wednesday, the 16th of August. Keep an eye out for that one. Other updates that, that myself and the other analysts here at CMC Markets do can be found on the chart forum, which is, which is right here, and also Insights. So if you click on Market Pulse, second one down is Insights, and this, the third option down is Chart Forum. So also feel free and uh, keep, to keep an eye on those there's other other bits of a, a news analysis that we do it's put on the insights and uh, chart forum is much more of a, a very kind of more of a short-term uh, look at a, at a chart so feel free to have, have a look on those because some of the stuff that we cover in our webinar will also be covered within insights uh, will also be covered on the news analysis section of the website and also be covered on the chart forum uh, but and from all of us here at cmc markets Thank you very much uh, for tuning in today and have a good trading week and good luck.